All right, I, I had built this little board uh, to test out my uh, my prescaler, and uh, it had a little display, and I made it into a little frequency counter just to play. And then I thought, well, that would be a nice little board to do. Um, maybe uh, somebody out there would enjoy that. And so I decided I would I would uh, go ahead and design a little thing and, and make this kind of into a standalone object, um, uh, pretty on, on a nice PC board. And then I could also bring out the I squared C lines, and then maybe that this would become my separate frequency counter with I squared C output, and see if that solved my problem or not. Uh, I have some <laughs> serious doubts about that, but anyway, I thought it would be a fun project anyway. So yeah, why don't we go ahead and do that? Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go out and lay out a PC board. So here's where we start. Um, we have the Arduino Nano up here. And we have our prescaler here, the SAB6456. Um, I've gone ahead and routed a pin over to the Nano so you can choose whether you want 64 uh, divided by 64 or divided by 256. And otherwise, the circuitry is all the same. Um, I put on the uh, protection diodes on the front. So you can bring in the frequency with an SMA connector or on this header and come in. And also on the header, I'm putting the uh, I squared C line, so I can bring those out if I want to. So let's take a look at the board. And this is what the board's gonna look like. Uh, like I said, have an SMA connector or a header, either way. And uh, yeah, it'll have a OLED display. I threw in some switches just for fun, if you wanna have different modes and stuff. Um, those, those would be available. Um, yeah, I don't know really if there's much more to say about this. It has a poured ground plane, uh, so that goes over everything. Um, otherwise, pretty simple layout. Um, I have a couple bypass capacitors. Um, the unused pins of the Nano I brought out to some headers in case you want to wire those up to something else. And uh, yeah, there you go. So we will send this out for fab and, uh, and go, there, uh, go from there. All right, so I really love this part. I really like prototyping things. Um, I started off with a, uh, a, a, a solderless breadboard, uh, one, of those, uh, one of these jobbers. I prototyped it on that, and then I went ahead and I actually uh, uh, soldered it down to a protoboard and made sure all the kinks were out of it. And then I laid out a board and then they come in the mail. Um, it's really, really satisfying. <laughs> uh, I get a lot of enjoyment out of this, even little simple little projects like this one. So I'm making a, a little frequency counter here and uh, there are some errors on this PC board. I will be fixing the error before I upload it to, uh, to my shared projects on PCBWay. Um, so you can grab this board too. Um, so I've already, I've already, uh, I've already fixed up the, uh, I've already fixed up the errors on this one, but I haven't ordered, haven't ordered the new boards yet. I thought I would try it out first. And, uh, this is what it looks like, uh, over here. Let me rearrange the camera. All right. So here we go. We're coming into the SMA and we're measuring hundred megahertz. So obviously it's not calibrated yet. It's, uh, it's quite a ways off. And so I'm going to be building in a calibration routine in the firmware. So it will ask you to insert 10 megahertz and then it will automatically calibrate itself. And then you'll be ready to go, uh, ready to go after that. Um, now I think there won't be a way to store that. I don't think there's E squared prom in the, uh, maybe there is. I'm trying to remember if there's E squared prom in the uh, in the uh, the two the three three twenty eight chip or not? There might be. I, I don't remember. I've never used that. I've always had external uh, uh, memory, but I'll look into that. Um, but we'll be able to we'll be able to calibrate it or change the program and upload it. Anyway, so this is what it's measuring. I have. Uh, if you want to get finer detail, you can. Uh, uh, get the hertz out of it instead of the megahertz, um, but we're looking at megahertz now. Uh, let's go ahead and bump it up to 200 megahertz. And looks like everything just doubled there. 300 megahertz. And 300 megahertz, it doesn't get there. 
So I don't remember what the prescaler specification was. Uh, I need to look that up. Since it's made for television, I don't. Th I'm not sure if it covers the UHF bands or not. It'd be nice if this went up to 440 megahertz. I'll I'll, I'll double check on that. Anyway, uh, it does seem to be up and running, and um, we can try it at low frequencies. I haven't done that yet. Let's do uh, one megahertz. See if it can do that. And it's not operating at one megahertz either. That's interesting. How about 10 megahertz? Uh, yeah, 10 megahertz is fine. Why isn't it operating at one megahertz? Five megahertz. That's fine. One megahertz. Very strange. Maybe it needs more signal. Uh, I will up the signal and that didn't help. And let me reduce the signal. And that didn't help. Interesting. Maybe there's a, a actually a capture range for that prescaler. Um, let's do three megahertz. Nope. Seven megahertz. Now I thought we did five megahertz. Maybe we didn't. Ten megahertz. Okay, there's something weird going on here. 50 megahertz. Oh, now I'm, I, I'm, I, I have the amplitude too low. I'm sorry. I had the amplitude set down. To, there we go. Uh, 50 megahertz. Okay. Let's go to 10 megahertz. Okay, that's fine. Let's go to 5 megahertz. Yeah, I just, I just didn't have the frequency up set high enough. Let's do 3 megahertz. So, yeah, 3 megahertz. So it'll cover most, most, most HF stuff uh, up to 2 meters. No, I'm not sure about 440 or not. I'm not sure if we can get there. Anyway, so first, first looks at the, uh, at the board. And uh, people have said, why don't you use an ESP32? And uh, that's just because they're, they're a little finicky programming. You have to push a button. And I just don't like pushing the button. I just don't like doing it. And it's a 3.3 volt part. So then you have to design everything with 3.3 volts. And this is a 5 volt part. And uh, uh, I've just kind of old school Arduino guy. <laughs> and that's the way, that's what it's going to be for a while. Um, I, I do use the ESP32s for a lot of other things, but uh, I'm just not comfortable in little little things like this yet to uh, to dedicate an ESP32 to it. Um, but maybe I should. 